Uh, let's check this example out. Let's get to it. I got here an oblique impact example. Uh, let's see here. I got this particle A and this particle B over here, and they are colliding. And uh, um, particle A, particle B collide. Mass A, 18 kilograms. Mass B of 6 kilograms. Uh, velocities at 3 meters per second horizontally to the right. Uh, got to give this a direction. Ooh, whoa. Got to give it a direction because... Shoot, otherwise it's not a vector. Direction and magnitude. Anyway, so here I got two particles colliding. Velocity of A, 7 meters per second. Velocity of B, 3 meters per second. Coefficient of restitution between the two particles, 0.5. I want to find the velocity of each particle after impact. First two videos will probably cover uh, getting the speed, all right? Calculating that speed out after impact. But the... Uh, the last part of the video, I'll, I'll work out the geometry of how to actually get the direction and the magnitude after impact. All right, more, imp more importantly, the direction, okay? We'll get the magnitude, the speed, right? All right, so the first thing you want to do is uh, uh, is really draw um, draw this drawing right here before and after impact, okay? So it's just, just set your problem up. So number one, draw before, oops, that's weak before and after impact. You want to make two drawings, okay? This is just good habit to set your problem up. So here are the drawings before and after impact. I pause and notice it's it's the same. It's the same drawing except before impact, I've got my velocities before and I've got uh, velocities after that. I've got to figure out what they are or the speed after. The, the next thing that's important after you make this drawing, this initial drawing here, is to come up with uh, to understand where the line of impact is, or the line of central impact, and what that means is, is where does the you know the collision takes place at the mass centers right here. So this green line right here is my line of impact. So this is my line of impact here, where the mass centers meet, and uh, um, and my plane of impact, 90 degrees to that, at the place where the the two particles make contact. Whoa, that line didn't show up. Here we go one more time. Hopefully that works. Uh, close enough, about 90 degrees right there. That's my, my plane of impact. This line of impact, I'm going to choose one of the directions as direction one. Or, or I, you know, some books like to use the normal direction as the line of impact. And then perpendicular to that, uh, you can use, you know, whatever rule you want right here. But uh, here I'll say this direction is my tangential line or my plane of impact line, okay? So I'm just going to use some coordinate system which happens to be labeled nt you could call this one two if you wanted to okay and then here i got i got the same thing i want to make sure i have my coordinate system established 90 degrees on my uh on my after impact drawing right here oh that was a little bit better right here but again these coordinates do not change i have my velocities here uh, uh before impact and then after impact because i don't know which direction my balls <laughs> or the masses are going but here, uh, here I've got, bam, velocity to the right, VAT, my tangential component velocity after impact, VA prime of T. And then my tangential component, I'm sorry, my normal component of velocity, VA, VAN prime after impact, okay? And notice, I'm, all I'm doing is making these after drawings uh, even though I don't know what they are, I'm drawing their individual components in the direction of the positive coordinate, okay, or the positive T or positive N. And then same thing here, I've got plus VB prime of T after impact, and then VB here, this would be VB prime of N after impact, okay? And essentially, these four values are the things I'm trying to figure out. The magnitudes of each of those components is what I'm trying to figure out. So now I, I, I got to figure out some geometry here. So let's see here. I've got an angle here. This is my end coordinate. I know this right here. I know the geometry associated with this. So I, I'm going to know what theta A is. And I'm, I'm going to know what theta B is. The angle from my, my normal component or my normal direction to uh, the velocity vectors. All right. And so here, one of the things I want to define next, I want to define each of my components before impact. So here I've got, let's say, V A n is equal to va cosine of theta a and this this velocity vector when i break this up right here is going to be let's see i'm gonna have a line parallel to that so parallel here 
and then parallel here, right here. So this will be my VA T before impact, and this component right here will be my VA N before impact. And notice VA N is going opposite of the positive N direction, and so this right here will be a negative VA cosine theta A, which is minus 7 meters per second times uh, the cosine of that angle using a 5, 12, 13 triangle, which, which is just 5 thirteenths. And that number is going to come out to minus 2.69 meters per second. Check my work. All right. And then here, VAT doing the opposite, which will be minus VA sine theta A. Okay. Again, negative because my direction of VAT is opposite of the positive T direction right here. So VAT here, VA sine theta A is equal to... Um, minus 6.46 meters per second, and then VB sub n is uh, VB cosine theta B right here, and this is going to come to 3 meters per second times 5 thirteenths, which is also 1.15 meters per second, and then here VB of T is equal to VB sine theta B, which is 3 meters per second times 12 over 13, which is 2.77 meters per second. Okay, and notice these are each positive because when I break up my components here, bam, and bam right here, this would be VB, uh, VB of T and this is VBN right here before or a, uh, after impact or before impact right here. It's just, you know, they're all in the positive sense of the coordinate systems I've established, plus N and plus T. All right. So I, I've got my components broken down now. Now I can go through and apply my basic principles. So the first principle I'm going to apply in the N direction, if you saw my video explaining oblique impact, is just uh, conservation of momentum in the N direction or of the system. Okay, and it's important of the system of particles in the n direction here. Okay, and here this equation then just becomes m a v a oops m a m a v a n plus m b v b n. The momentum, total momentum of all the particles before impact is equal to the momentum of the particles VA prime of N plus MB VB prime of N after impact, okay? After impact here, I've got my total momentum right here. And this will just be, if I plug in some numbers, 8 kilograms times uh, minus 2.69 meters per second plus 6 kilograms times... 1.15 meters per second is equal to, you know, 8 kilograms times VA prime of N plus MB, v, oh, MB which is 6 kilograms, yes, yeah, 6 kilograms, duh, VB prime of N, okay? So I have, I have this equation here, and I've got Bam, I've got in this equation, I have one equation, two unknowns, okay? Two unknowns, that means I need one more, okay? The other thing I want you to know is that, hey, in this conservation of momentum, this equation right here was essentially derived assuming all the velocities were positive, okay, in the positive sense. And then that's why when we substitute into these values, VAN, this we just keep, we keep the sign from above, okay? So the negative 2.69. All right, so that's something you don't want to mess up. All right. Now, now that we've done that, I can simplify this equation into uh, essentially just, you know, I just run some numbers, minus 14.62 kilogram meter per second is equal to 8 kilograms times VA prime of N plus 6 kilograms times VB prime of N. So now here... We can go on, we can move on here. Whoa, where did I go? Okay, so now the second, we need another equation for the n direction here, okay? And in the n direction, the other equation that we can use is the coefficient of restitution, okay? 
the coefficient of restitution. Yes, exciting. This is one of my favorite equations, I guess. Okay, so here E, it's it's really just a measure of, it's like a material property or interaction between the two. And all I do is look at it as like the relative velocities before and after impact of two materials. All right, and so here, it's just, this is VB prime of N minus VA prime of N over VA of N minus VB of N. Okay, and look at it. it's just the relative velocity above after impact divided by the relative velocity before impact, and this is 0.5. Okay, so it's a kind of like the measure of energy that's transferred. And so here, if I use this, I you know I know these two equations, right? I know these two numbers right there. So so this just becomes v b prime of n minus v a prime of n is equal to 0.5 times. Uh, the numbers for VA sub N, which I believe was minus 2.69 meters per second, minus the, the velocity of VB of N, which is 1.15 meters per second. Okay, and, and that just becomes quite simply, oh, this is maybe too redundant, minus VA prime of N is equal to minus 1.92 meters per second. And I, I bust my regular algebra here. I got I got I have now two equations, two unknowns, bam, bam, right here. And I can solve two equations, two unknowns, and that tells me that that let's see here. Oh, I get V B prime of N is equal to uh, minus two point one four meters per second, and V A prime of N is equal to minus 0.22 meters per second.